Hello, good to see you again and welcome in our fifth video update. Today we are going to talk about our NPC systems and AI. And since it's something I don't understand at all, I will let others tell you about it. So first, Victor will talk about our NPCs and then uh, the guys from Charles University Computer Science Department will tell you something about AI. And by the way, the university was founded 50 years before uh, the events in our game by the Emperor Charles IV, who is the father of the King Wenzel, which is the, one of the lead characters in our game. Hi, what we want to achieve here is to create a world that is living. Every NPC has some function in this world. Every NPC uh, has some job, some hobbies, some interests. Every NPC has something we call day cycle. It means they sleep in the night, well, most of them. Uh, they wake up in the morning, uh, eat breakfast, and then go to the work. What they actually do depends on many, many things, like the weather. If it's raining and he works outside, he may stay at home for, for now or go to the work later. Every NPC has some hobbies and interests. For example, it's evening and this guy uh, goes to the pub. He usually goes to the pub because he loves it. Today, he went to the pub and it was full. So he, uh, the system looks at his other interests and tell him, okay, the pub is full, so uh, say some bad words and go for a walk or go fishing or uh, I don't know, or go home and stay there or go sleep earlier than usually. These interests and hobbies can even change during the gameplay. And all the system as a whole reacts to the player's action, which is a very important part because the player is some variable in the system. Uh, every NPC does some stuff that is prescripted to some extent, and they react to situations. And the player is some wild card in the middle of this that can do almost anything. He can start to kill people. He can, well, actu actually only if he pulls out his sword and go uh, through the street with a sword in the hand, people will react on it because it seems dangerous and they will run away or call the guards and they will arrest him. The next important part is the quest system, which is actually injected into these NPCs' worlds. Uh, in Deliverance, there are no special dedicated so-called quest NPCs. It uh, means that if you, for example, have some quest to bring the, to the blacksmith some letter, uh, the blacksmith is not standing on the street waiting for the letter with the question marks over his head. He will actually do his job. If it's the night, he will go sleep. And if you want to deliver the letter, you need to wait for the morning or wake him up. Of course, you won't be very happy because he was woken up in the middle middle of the night and all this actually affects the gameplay and the relationship play, uh, relationship NPCs have toward the player. Now I'm going to introduce Tomasz who is the uh, brain of our AI team and he will tell you some more technical details. The Warhorse AI team consists of people who are actually from research and game development research and AI research at the Charles University. Uh, me and my team uh, started to work uh, together with Warhorse two years ago and we wanted to create an AI that is actually alive or very living in a living world. Uh, we created our engine uh, from scratch, so it's a completely new uh, AI engine uh, on top of CryEngine. We wanted to use the behavioral trees as our main component. And then we added some communications, so our NPCs actually can talk to each other, can send messages, uh, or can send messages uh, to the environment. Uh, as we progressed, we also added features like the player is actually an NPC to us, so the AI system can interact with the player or can use the player as an NPC. We also have objects like NPCs or the entire world, is an NPC to us. This is actually our new system uh, for the NPCs in combat, which scouts uh, the surrounding areas. And this is used to uh, make sense uh, in combat of what can be used uh, against the enemy, 
where are the obstacles and so on. Every NPC has its function in the world and this function is real. Uh, they create real goods that player can buy, uh, they do their work and crafting NPCs even uh, play the same mini games that the player does to craft. While we don't have dragons, we have chickens. Uh, I even believe I have seen a bear once. So all these animals are actually NPCs too. They have their own day cycle, they sleep at night or hunt at night, uh, they have some kind of behavior, they run away from, from player or they attack him. Now let me introduce you our scripting team. This is Peter, this is Peter and this is Michal. These guys are actually working on all the systems I was talking about before and they are implementing it into the game. Hi, I would like to demonstrate modularity of our scripting. By modularity I mean that we are able to script a program um, every behavior separately and then put this behavior into the mind of our NPCs. Therefore, we are not scripting the entire character but only parts of its behavior. These uh, modules or behaviors we call can be put to any character and he starts to behave according to this behavior. I would like to show this on this farmer over here uh, that goes here, takes a hoe of his, out of his pocket and goes uh, farming or hoeing on this field over here and he does it at a particular time which is over here and he starts hoeing okay now to change this farmer into a fisherman I need only few keystrokes so I stop the game and put a different behavior to his tree this is his tree what he should do at that hour press OK I run the game again and now I have to run a little bit over here because the farmer didn't go uh, to hoe again but he picks up a rod over here fishing rod and starts fishing so that's the same character only different behavior with this um, the scripting of AI is like uh, putting Lego pieces together using this technique uh, the behaviors are like a Lego puzzle from which we can create any um, intricate behavior of NPCs we like. And this is it, the living medieval world in the palm of your hand. We don't want the player to be central point of the universe. There is a lot of people in Deliverance with their lives, needs, joys and troubles. And they are waiting for you. Thank you for watching, I hope you like what you saw. And next time prepare for something special because we are going to show you a playable build, the same one we showed to the publishers. It's going to be at least 30 minutes and uh, it might even be a live stream video, so stay tuned.